Today I want to talk to you about the clown or rocket killifish, one of my favorite nano fish that can be a little bit tricky to get a hold of and they don't look like a whole lot in the store because typically they come in about that big. So you totally miss them unless you're asking the employees, do you have these, can you get them in? And then when you see them you go, I thought they were cooler, I saw cooler pictures online. They will be that cool, especially the males. So uh, one of my favorite nano fish, Five gallons and up, I would say. Gotta have a top because they will jump right out of that thing. That's why they call them the rockets. Zing! There they go. pH anywhere from about 6.6 six to 7.6. Temperature, being a killifish, they can go quite cool. So I would say kind of 67 to, you get towards 80, you're going to shorten their lifespan. But they, they live, you know, about three, two to three years, depending on temperature. When it comes to feeding them, lots of microfoods. I love frozen cyclops. I love our fry food. I love uh, any micro pellet, whether it's uh, you know like an extreme nano pellet, a Hikari micro pellet, fancy guppy food, flake food. All of that works. Uh, it's give them a variety, but do know that they kind of want to feed towards that top one third. So floating food that lasts uh, up there for a while is pretty good. Uh, besides that, tank mates. Celestial Pearl Danio, shrimp, they're shrimp safe typically. Um, you know, Norman Lamp, I killifish, Burchard, not Burchard, that's an African cichlid. Uh, Bridgetate Rasbora is what I was gonna say. All these types of nano fish work out really well with them. They're plant friendly. In fact, the more plants you have, the more out and about they're gonna be. If you get some floating plants like some water lettuce or uh, Ricky or something like that, they'll even lay some eggs up there. And, and breeding them can be very easy. If you keep an aquarium that is just them, so no shrimp, no snails, nothing like that, what I've found in the past is that they will actually lay their eggs and they'll hatch out. And the adults, they seem to be smart enough to not eat the fry, which is great. But once those fry raise up a little bit and now they're kind of juvies or teenagers, those will eat the next fry. So you kind of get this generational gap going of like, I've got adults, they laid eggs, I made some fry, the fry started growing up and no more eggs happened or no more fry happened because they just eat them as they find them. But once those become adults also, and then you've got all adults again, then you go, hey, I got fry again. A lot of times we're trying to diagnose what we're doing wrong and we're not doing anything wrong. It's just that's the way that's gonna work in that aquarium. Yes, you could get them to spawn on moss or these floating plants and remove them and hatch them in a different aquarium. But I really like the passive approach to this because it's just kind of fun to go, look, we got babies, we made more. Great, uh, great fish for like a desktop aquarium. You can definitely do it in larger aquariums. When I was breeding them, actually, I did it in a 55 gallon with Norman Lamp Achilles also. And that's kind of how I got familiar. And then I went down to 20 gallon tanks to play with them. And uh, really, really a lovely fish. When it comes to price, expect to pay somewhere between about 4 and $8 per. The males are going to have the big fins with the rocket tail to them, whereas the females are going to have smaller finnage and not so pronounced colors. They're still going to be kind of that striped color, but uh, the, you know, you're going to be tempted to go, well, you know, I don't really want a lot of the females because they don't look as cool, but I would, I would implore you to go like, well, buy like two males and four females and get that colony going. So you might be into it for you know, 50 bucks at that point. But as you make more, there is pretty much always an outlet for clown killies. Back to the store, back to another hobbyist. Like everyone that sees the fish goes, wow, I like that. And because they're a nano fish, they can go in very small aquariums. They're shrimp safe, they're snail safe. And there's, everyone's kind of got like, well, you know, I've got that 10 gallon. I've been meaning to do something with. That'd be a great tank for these clown killies. I don't know. I just really, really, really love them. And I try to keep them in my store all the time. And honestly, I'm saddened that I don't have any in my fish room right now. That might change because I do miss breeding them. So uh, one of my favorite fish, you know, I hope you enjoy, you know, these kind of care guides and me trying to express not only interest in a fish maybe you haven't seen before, but what to know about them. And I think the, the biggest takeaway to know about them is they're not going to look that cool in the store. They're going to be very small. You're going to need very small foods. They will jump right out of there, but otherwise pretty unfussy and easy to take care of. So work on those things and you'll, you know, have a nice little planet tank and you'll enjoy them. So good luck and uh, we'll see you around the aquarium co-op.